Uh, hello and uh, welcome to the PML School. Today we have our guest speaker, Frank Schriebel from company Morphosis, here with us. And uh, it seems we have again picked up on a very popular topic of these days, the pharmacokinetics of monoclonal antibodies. But before we start, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Frank. Uh, Dr. Frank Schriebel is senior scientist at Morphosis where he's working as a laboratory leader in the pharmacokinetics and immunogenicity. Uh, he received his master's of science degree at the biochemistry department of the Technical University of Munich. And then he earned his PhD degree from Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule Zurich in Switzerland, where he was working at the Institute of Molecular Biology and Physics. After that, he spent a short period, uh, postdoc period, at the Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry in Munich before he joined company Morphosis. Uh, Frank, welcome to this event. Uh, we are now turning over to your presentation, so please go ahead. Okay, good afternoon from my side. Um, um, thanks for the intro, Bernd. Um, it's my pleasure to, to talk today on, on, on the PML School session, which, which I have been following also um, through the last weeks and months. Um, so um, let me, please allow me to lose a few sentences on my company. So uh, Burns has already mentioned I'm working for Morphosis. You can here see uh, the email address if you're interested. Um, we're a company developing monoclonal antibodies. That's the interest in, in the topic I'm talking about today. Um, we're about 350 people founded 25 years ago. So um, yeah, if you're interested, uh, go visit our website. Also, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues Stefan Hertle, Roland Baumgartner, and my former colleague Joao Pereira, um, who also um, helped with all the modelings and part of this uh, I'm presenting today. Um, so the topic of today um, is uh, the target-mediated drug disposition, TMDD, and specifically the quasi-equilibrium, the QE assumption. Um, so let me switch to the next slide. I hope you can all see um, this slide. Um, so on, on the top of the slide, you can really see the textbook cartoon of, of a TMDD. Um, you would have a, a dosing of a monoclonal antibody, which is abbreviated MAP here in this case. Um, it would have a concentration. Here it's directly injected into the central compartment. Um, and these antibodies, they are very specific molecules. They bind to their receptors, and depending on how much receptor you have or how fast the turnover is, you can get significant TMDD. Um, the receptor here is, is abbreviated or depicted as an, as an R, and you will get binding, of course, from your antibody to this receptor, forming the complex. And, um, now, if you look at this, I have uh, put into boxes all the rate constants, uh, and you can see there's quite some of them, right? So um, we will have the, the normal um, catabolic elimination of the antibody, the nonspecific catabolic elimination. Um, the receptor itself is, of course, has a turnover. It's synthesized by a K-SYN, degraded by a K-DEC. We have the binding rate constants, K on, K off, and the K int, which is the degradation of the complex. Um, now it's, uh, I, sometimes I, when I haven't looked at the TMDD for a while, I also tend to mix up K DAC and K int. So K DAC belongs to the free receptor, uh, K int belongs to the complex. Uh, usually for these um, TMDD models, you also need the second compartment, the peripheral compartment depicted on the left side. Um, because most monoclonal antibodies will follow like a two compartment model, so you really normally need this peripheral compartment to describe appropriately the PK of the antibody. And this will give you two more uh, rate constants um, um, in your equations. Um, it's also worth mentioning, I think, that usually these TMDD models, they do all their binding in the central compartment, which, of course, physiologically doesn't necessarily have to be the, the real thing, but it's a, often enough a good enough assumption 
um, for this model. Um, I would also highlight uh, the, the PML School Lesson 6, uh, where the full TMDD model has been presented. Um, I like especially the, the slides with the main assumptions of the TMDD equations, um, the typical ranges of the parameters that are in there, and I also like very much the, uh, the, usage, of, the usage of the multiple observed statements if you have, in addition to your drug PK data, also data on the free receptor or the complex, and then you can nicely um, uh, read this into your Phoenix code with, uh, with several observed statements. So next slide. Um, this sort of in the upper half shows the prototypical the textbook curve of a, a time concentration plot of an uh, antibody that exhibits TMDD. Uh, you have mainly four phases. Phase A is like the rapid distribution of the antibody and also binding events to your specific target will already happen here. In B, um, the TMDD path is saturated, so what you will see is mainly the catabolic elimination um, of the antibody, the normal non-specific elimination. And then at some point you have this characteristic bend down phase in C where really the, the so-called sink effect the TMDD kicks in and you get this um, um, nonlinear clearance here. And then, offer on, and then phase D would again be like a linear clearance, which is mainly dominated um, um, by K off and K in by the, by the um, target. Now, in real world, normally you don't, or at least I, I didn't really see um, the D phase, usually your data is cut by your bioanalytical LLOQ, so you will not really see these lower phases here. Um, and together with the fact that um, there are quite some parameters, as you have seen on the previous slide, this often leads to, to a potential instability of the model and long run times. Um, and especially the binding constants K on and, and possibly also K off, they are often difficult to estimate from PK data. I mean, if you think about K on, that's the on rate of binding, um, this will likely be very quick and once you take your first sample here uh, in your clinical study, most of the binding will have already happened. So this is often not really in the bioanalytical data. Um, solutions to this have been um, that either you freeze at least initially one or more parameters, e.g. Uh, K on, K off, based on assumptions that you have from, example, for example, in vitro data, or there's massive literature out there on the simplification of these full TMDD models, and then these simplifications always try to reduce the complexity of the models and to make them more stable and, and, and um, um, yeah, more stable for, for fitting. So one of these um, equations or one of these approximations is, is the QE assumption, the, the, the quasi-equilibrium assumption. And this um, assumption really assumes an equilibrium between the complex on the one side and the free drug and the receptor on the other side. And what you then mathematically can do, you can take the two rate constants, K off and K on, and assemble this in, a, in a, um, affinity, in the affinity constant KD, which then means, of course, you will have to deal only with KD in your models and not any longer with K off and K on. Um, this may be a reasonable assumption as, as the binding processes, they are often faster than the drug elimination or the turnover of, of the receptor or the complex. Um, there may, of course, also be cases where this is not really applicable to, to a human equilibrium. And then there's um, this quasi-steady state assumption, which I will not talk about today. And this sort of also considers into a, a constant then called KSS, this doesn't only consider K off and K on, but also the K in. That means you, they, it assumes that this 
so this elimination is also significant, and then you, that you have sort of a steady state concentration of RC. This is a concept that has been borrowed from, from enzyme kinetics, the steady state assumption. I, I said I will not talk about this uh, QSS assumption. Um, in my eyes, as I see it from the papers, it's mathematically quite the same as the QE, just you would use KSS instead of KD, and these, uh, the KSS would then report on something else uh, than the constant KD, but yeah, I said I will not talk about this today. So um, I guess um, for if, if you're really interested in, in the math, which, which can be really fun, um, you can look at the literature and, and, and look at how these ODEs are derived, and, and there's quite extensive and, and good literature out there, I think. So what I will do today, we'll just take a reliable source, a literature source, um, and this paper, Gidiansky from 2008, um, where they um, um, present the equations about these approximations. And we will just put these into a non-lin, Phoenix and non-lin, and, and work with those a bit. So this seems to be a quite busy slide, it, uh, but this is just to show you, um, you can really go into the, the paper, grab the equations from there, and translate them one-to-one -one into your PML code, into your Phoenix modeling language. Um, so the, the top three here, these are the three ODEs, the ordinary, ordinary differential equations that you need. The first one deals with the concentration of the drug. It's the total drug concentration, thus it's a bit hard to, to sometimes to understand, but you can really take the, the equations from, um, yeah, fr from this paper. You drop this first term, this is like the, the input term, um, you don't need this in, in, um, in Phoenix because for this exercise we will just have a, a ID dose point, so we don't need this input term. Um, and then you can just go step by step, K in, C taught in the paper, stays of course K in, C taught in your PML. Um, I, now for this example, I switch to a clearance parameterization, that means I change the KEL which is the elimination of the catabolic elimination of the drug. I just changed this to clearance divided by V1. But that's just uh, yeah, a, a personal taste. You can also go with the KEL if you like it better. And then one more thing has been done. You can see in, in the publication this is written as a concentration. It's, it's um, uh, the change of a concentration, um, I switched to the change of an amount. So what I did, I just multiplied the whole thing to the left by a volume, and then you arrive at, at, the, con at, at the amount, of course. The second ODE, as you need, is like the, the, the standard uh, peripheral um, um, uh, equation. And then comes the third ODE, the change in the total receptor. Again, you just take the equation from the paper, write it into your PML text model. Um, you need two more things. You need to define the initial, um, the R0, which is the initial concentration of your target, of your receptor, um, which is, of course, defined by the synthesis and the degradation. That's, again, a little steady state assumption for, for the receptor here, for the initial concentration of the receptor. And you need to define with the sequence statement, which we have seen in, in, in uh, uh, lectures before, um, that the R tot is equals R zero. That means the initial um, concentration, the initial total concentration of receptor is, of course, the, the uh, initial um, that the R0 uh, defined up here. Um, the other two are just um, equations. There, there are no ODEs. They're just equations that calculate the free drug central based on, on the quadratic solution of the mass balance equation and um, another uh, equation which calculates RC, which, the, which is the complex. And in here you can see um, the KD. And again, you can just grab these and, and just write them one by one into your code. Um, 
The rest of it in, in, in the Phoenix model language are the standard elements, I would say. You need an observed statement, you need an error model, uh, and then you define your structural parameters, and, and then that's basically it. And of course, um, this will all be posted in, in, in the, in the uh, Phoenix forum, so you can just go ahead and if, if you think you can make use of the code, just, just grab it and, and play with it. Um, so with this, I'd like, I'd like to come to the demo already. Um, uh, I will have two little parts in the demo. Um, the first one, it will just be a, a, a little example data trace of a TMDD and see how we can fit the QE approximation to this. Um, this is not meant to show you now that the QE approximation is the one and only um, um, uh, approximation for this data example, but just to show you the QE approximation works. Um, the second set uh, or the second thing I'd like to do is use the set of equations and, and simulate um, receptor occupancies um, at different KDs and at different R0. So, uh, I mean, that might be, for example, you might be uh, interested in the question, um, like in very early phase of discovery or research of your project, what, what affinity would I need for my antibody if I assume uh, for this TMDD system, different R zeros and or and different dynamics. You can do some simulation to get a feeling about um, how how your how antibodies with different KDs might behave. That's at least uh, one of the questions we sometimes ask ourselves. Um, so with this, um, I switch to the Phoenix software. Um, I hope you can see it. Otherwise, Bern, please just let me know. Um, it looks looks fine. Frank. Okay, great. So, um, um, okay, let's come to this little TMDD fit example. So you can see here that's just yeah, um, that's not real data. That's just um, simulated data. You have a time which is here in days, and you have a concentration which is micrograms per ml. Um, and of course, um, what you do first um, when you when you have a data, you send it for plotting, and um, you just map uh, the time versus the cons, and then we go uh, log. And yeah, I mean, not surprisingly for this lecture, you can see that in this example, you do have this bend down effect, so there might be TMDD going on. Um, what you can also see, you don't have this bend up effect, which is cut by by your bioanalytical LLOQ. Um, so yeah, let's just see how we can what we can make out of the data already. Um, likely, what what uh, what you can already estimate now from this, just having the single trace of data and not having the bend up down there, um, it will likely not be possible to, to really obtain good estimates for all data, but it's good enough to, to show that, that the equations work. Okay, so basically we just again go to this data um, and we send it, uh, as you have seen before, to the Phoenix model object. You can choose where to put it. I put it in the demo. Um, and then, um, I mean, we've seen that you can nicely work with the edit as graphical down here if you want or if you like set it up or sometimes you can set many things up here to get close to what you want. Um, right now, uh, in this case, I, I go straight to, um, to the textual editor. And uh, then here in the model, I just delete what has been there. Um, I copy the model from down here. So here's the model. Um, take it up here. And you just copy your, your the model and, and as said, this will be published uh, on, on the uh, on the 
uh, on the on the forum. So um, a few more words on this. Um, so usually these, um, as, as you're dealing with affinities and, and rate constants, these are often molar um, molar uh, parameters. So also um, TMDD equations are usually written in, in molar amounts. So and and in this little example, I use the I use picomole per kg. Um, you can also, of course, use any other what you like and or remove the kg. Um, and also um, um, about the one uh, one mic per kick, which is uh, the more appropriate. Um, those for me would be about 6,700 picomole per kg uh, for a normal antibody. Um, the other thing I would like to point out, I mean, these again, these are just the the, uh, the ODEs that we've talked about. Here in this code, I have defined this k int equals k deck, which means um, the degradation rate of the complex k int is equal to the degradation rate of the free receptor. Now this again, you cannot assume a priori. Um, you would need to have data on this if you do this. For example, there have been publications on Marilimumab out there who showed this and then they, they can assume this. Um, yeah, so it's in the code, if, uh, just remove it if, if, if you can't assume it and then you would have, then you would just get kint, which is currently down here uh, like, uh, uh, just removed from the code, you could just plug that back in and then you would be able to fit the K in also. Um, uh, the other thing I would like to point out here, this, that's a little trick again that you don't need this, but I thought, uh, we thought it's nice. Here we convert the molar concentration of drug to a microgram per ml concentration and then we also say in the observe statement, um, that we observe the concentration in micrograms per ml. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say here. Um, so um, down here, the, the initial estimates for this regression are given, and again, these are typical physiological parameters like 50 ml per kg, that is a normal volume of distribution of the central uh, volume. V2 is the same and, and also the clearances and, and the intercompartmental clearance Q, which is the distribution in and out into the peripheral compartment. Um, this is again, uh, this is also a physiological um, value here. Uh, the KD is now set here to one nanomolar, which again for a monoclonal antibody is um, yeah, it's it's a, like a, a a normal normal value. Okay, so let's go to the mapping. Um, so time is time. Uh, we have the C ops is the concentration. We don't need to map any IDs. We uncheck population because it's just a single trace. Um, and we can quickly check the initial estimates now. Uh, uh, the machine is compiling and calculating. Uh, of course, we need a dose first. Uh, so we would have, as mentioned, um, that's a one mic per kick dose in, in, in picomolar per kick, and we just give it at time zero. So um, uh, we don't input any rate, so that would be a, a, a bolus right now. And now it should, something should show up here. Yeah, right, so um, you can see the initial estimates are already okay-ish. I mean, we could maybe, you can see uh, uh, the volume the volume one doesn't quite fit, so we could maybe lower this a bit. And um, then you, you don't have these magic little triangles to put your initial estimate into the code, so you would have to go really back to your, um, to here and, and put the initial estimate. And yeah, and then uh, I think we're good to go. You can execute and see what what this takes us. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah, you can see the um, 
we get estimates for all parameters. Um, we do get quite uh, quite low CDs because it's of course a simulated example. Um, what you, but what you do see, you get a bit of a higher CV on the KDAG, which is the degradation of the free receptor, and um, you get also quite high CV on the um, on the R zero. Um, now, if you were to play with this um, with, with these equations, um, we would find out that depending on the initial estimates we give. Um, you will get different uh, parameter estimates in the end, which which shows you that, yeah, that 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 the model is not really stable. And of course, you should also, um, as as mentioned in in earlier PML schools, look at all the diagnostics um, uh, and see if these make sense to you, if the fit is appropriate or not. Um, but as mentioned, so this model is not really stable on this little piece of data. There's just too many parameters. Um, so what we'll do here, um, we'll just freeze. Um, I just copied the model, and um, we can just rename this now model and freeze KD. Um, so you could just go back to your model and and maybe at least as mentioned initially put the the, um, the free statement for for to some parameter and that would then mean that this parameter is like fixed and and it's not um, uh, there's no no estimation done on this parameter and um, uh, with this um, can again execute this Uh, yeah, and um, yeah. So, so now you can see for for KD, no error is of course calculated because you 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 fixed it, and now these uh, this five and this point one, so five per day for KDEC and and point one nanomolar for our zero, these are sort of the true values, which of course you don't know, but um, um, when when you did the simulation up front. Um, in this very little example, um, uh, so yeah, then then you hit the true values of this. Again, just showing you, um, you really need good data. You need you need rich data. So this little uh, this little piece of data that we have here is not just not good enough to estimate all parameters. Yeah, you you we needed to freeze the KD, and um, yeah, just depending on your type of data. I mean, yeah. You, you, you can try and play and, and, and see if you at least initially need to freeze something or not, but at least we could clearly see the, the uh, code works. We can, we can get parameter estimates for this. Um, so the second little thing I would like to do with this um, is, is do some simulations. Now here, um, up here I've done, um, I've built a, a very small uh, call it simulation matrix. You can do this in Excel or with wherever you want. Um, there's like 10 different scenarios. You have uh, each time the same dose, one mic per kick, the 6,700 picomole per kick. And then it's just different KDs uh, and one, uh, one R0, meaning one initial receptive concentration, so 0 0.01 nanomolar and then the same with 0 0.1 nanomolar, again, a range of KD. Uh, these two columns, you just need to map on them. You, they don't really, um, they don't really um, do much. So you can send this to, again, to the Phoenix model. Oh, no, hang on, we do it like this. So we take the, just take this model, copy it, Paste it. Oh, ha. And we have a problem. Let's see. Try once more. Copy it. Paste it. So that should do it now. Okay, so let's call this 
in KD. Okay, and then big D. Um, and now here I, I just copied the, the the model now that just gives me the, the model that I that I had. And now in the main sheet I just removed the, the data that I had before I also remove the, the little dosing sheet, um, and then I just into the main um, into the main mapping panel I just drag and drop this little simulation matrix, um, and now so we have in this little simulation matrix as you remember different KDs and different R zeros meaning different receptor concentrations and we want to read them into the code somehow. And I, I think a, a quite nice trick is to read them in um, via the covariate statement. So you can just go into your code, and by just putting the little hash, you just remove this. So it sort of it, it becomes a comment. Um, so you would just remove the KDs, uh, and we would remove the R zeros like this. And now we can just say um, covariate KD and covariate um, R zero. And then all the all the warnings disappear. Go back to your main mapping panel, and then now suddenly you you have you have whatever is a covariate allows you to map. And since the name in, in the source data is the same as the, as the covariate, Phoenix has already done the job for you, so it, it's already mapped. Um, you just need to map the cons, uh, and we need to sort by ID because we want, um, uh, for each of these 10 scenarios, we want one single uh, simulation. Uh, so that's it. Uh, now we need to map the dose. So that's all in, in, yeah, so the dose is in here, so we need to map a tot onto the dose. Um, then let's go to run options, we do a simulation. Let's say we do 2,000 points, up to 100 days, and um, ah, now what I forgot you to show. So in the model text itself here, it's defined, again, this is a standard definition, the receptor occupancy in percent. And again, this is just a user-defined term. You can name this whatever you want. So the receptor occupancy in percent is, of course, at the complex divided by the total amount of receptor times 100. So ideally, if everything is in the complex, um, if the whole target is in the complex, then this would, of course, be 1 and times 100, it would be 100%. So that this just calculates the uh, your receptor occupancy in percent. And then you can just ask for this um, as a variable to be output, and maybe you ask for the C for your concentrations. And um, what I'd like to do also, um, I'll just now start it and then um, explain what I have done, uh, zero. And we want the R O percent, and it should do it, I guess. Okay, I think we can start. Yeah, okay, now it's working. So what I've done here, I've just asked for a little table, a simulation table. I think you've seen, seen this also before in other PML schools. What I'm asking, I'm asking at day 50, and I'm asking the machine to put me out on day 50, the receptor occupancy in percent. And, and just for convenience, I also would like to display the KD and the R0, meaning the initial receptor concentrations that I have put into the simulations via this covariate statement. So that's just for convenience that um, these things are then displayed in, in the table at the end, and um, now um, you see the machine working. It's doing like 10 simulations. Um, now it's done, and you can have your have a look at your simulations here in, in, in the graph, and you will have your your 10 simulations um, yeah, down here, and you get your concentrations and and your um, receptor occupancy in percent. 
Now the little table we've been asking for is up here. Um, and you can see for each of these 10 scenarios that we have chosen at arbitrary time 50, um, 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 we have a receptor occupancy in percent and we get uh, the RO and R0 out that we have uh, put in via the covariate statement. Now again, this is just a, a stupid example that why, why would we ask for receptor occupancy at day 50? And in this example, it doesn't make sense. It's just something. But maybe for your application, you could think of that maybe you give multiple doses and you want to ask for the receptor occupancy at steady state. So you would, would maybe just pick a trough level in steady state here with the correct with time you want and and you would get the receptor occupancy in percent at, at this um, trough level in steady state. Um, yeah. And then of course you can uh, send this again to plotting. Um, you can put the KD on X, the RO on Y, and you can group by R0 and go lock on the X, and then you would get something like this, which I think is a nice piece of data you could show or you could use for yourself. So this would just now give you this receptor occupancy in percent, um, depending yeah, in, in relation to the KD of your antibody um, that you would have. And here you would have the two scenarios of two different um, R0s of two different levels of, of, of your target. Maybe you know from literature that it should be in between this or from your own experiments so you can, uh, you can, you would, would be able to look at those. Of course, this also depends on all the other parameters like um, we have a now varied K, uh, K, K deck uh, and K in. So, of course, this also depends on these. So, but you can use, um, yeah, you, you can do some, a nice panel of simulations by just building such a simulation sheet that you want to check and, and put in uh, via the, the, the covariate statement. Uh, and of course, now in this example, the simulations, they were just um, um, based on, on these, again, hypothetical parameters, but um, yeah. Uh, physiological parameters and, and in, in the range of, 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 of antibodies. But of course, it's different for, for each, each problem. And you would have, of course, to uh, think carefully uh, before you do simulations, um, uh, what you do and what you put in there. Um, so I guess that would be it um, from the um, demo. Um, so demo one, we've seen the code works. Um, we can do regressions, although this little tiny little data set that I used here uh, doesn't really allow estimation of all parameters. We, we, you would need to freeze the KD to, to get um, uh, good estimates. Um, but yeah, uh, hope, hope you, you have uh, more, more data than, than the single trace. Okay, so demo two, um, I don't need to repeat everything now. Um, we did just a bunch of simulations by reading in different KDs and R zeros uh, and, and arrived at this plot, um, which showed us the, the receptor occupancy and percent at a defined time point uh, um, in relation to the KD. And also I would like to cite one paper that has been published recently on this. Uh, I, I think it's quite a, a, a nice one. Um, uh, Tivari et al. Um, published this year and they used the full TMDD model to build that kind of relationships about affinity considerations of antibodies in relation um, to uh, two different assumptions or two uh, different R zeros and two different uh, two different turnovers of of the target. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in this, read it and and code it and and play with it. Um, so my conclusions would be: um, textual input mode is very versatile and it allows you really to code anything you want, which we've also seen last week in the PDPK uh, lesson. Um, of course, you, you need to know what 
you code there from literature, you should ch potentially challenge these published models or adapt to your specific case. Um, we have seen TMDD models um, and, and to a lesser extent the approximations of the TMDD model. They rely on quite rich data. You need the appropriate dose range uh, studied. Um, you, you need, of course, good bioanalytics. You need to know what your PK assay has measured. Did it measure free or total drug? Or man, sometimes it's not that easy to define this. Uh, and ideally, you have um, bioanalytical data on receptor or on, on the complex, which you can then fit together with your drug data to get better estimates of these TMDD parameters. Um, so the QE that, that I've um, uh, shown today, I think is one useful simplification of the TMDD model. It assumes equilibrium between uh, complex on the one hand and drug and receptor on the other. And of course, um, um, which I haven't done today and in the interest of time, of course, you should always invest time um, um, into the proper model selection, right? You should not just take one model and plug it onto your data. Um, you should try maybe the full TMDD model. You should try the michaelis menten um, um, simplifications, approximations, and, and then decide which model describes your data best um, based on the question you you want to answer. So, yeah, um, I haven't done this today, but um, uh, I think we, we have learned this uh, before also in the PML school that we should uh, explore different models. So I think that would be it. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, happy to take questions. Yeah, thanks, Frank. So it was a very interesting presentation and also a demonstration on a, a very popular topic. So thanks very much. Uh, we already have a, a few questions, but I would like to encourage the audience, I mean, please use the right-hand side of the Cisco WebEx console to post your questions. Uh, we might not be able to cover all the questions, but in that case, uh, as you know, we are uh, posting these responses to Q&A session on our forum as well. Uh, so, uh, Frank, we've got a few questions. Just a second. Um, the first question is, um, the assumption here is that the target or receptor is present in the central compartment. Uh, what if the target is in the peripheral tissue, it, for example, the tumor and xenograft studies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, you can, of course, and, and there have been attempts in the literature, you can, of course, plug um, your TMDD model um, onto your peripheral concentration, right? Um, and there have been publications by Lachmann, Helene Lachmann, um, who also um, used then the TMDD uh, on the peripheral um, 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 uh, uh, drug. So, yeah, definitely you can do this. And and um, but often enough, as said, I, I think. If you have a clear indication that your target is really only a uh, peripheral, then it you might it might be beneficial to try to to put the TMDD part onto the uh, peripheral drug concentrations. And, and I think, as I said, you can check the publication by Lachmann. Um, but often enough, um, although physiologically the binding might not occur in the central compartment. It's good enough to model the data as it would happen, right? So we often do these simplifications on on, on data. All right. Uh, thanks, Frank. Um, maybe just a couple of other, maybe not too complex questions. Uh, when you do the simulation, uh, do you simulate at a single time point by putting time there, or what do you, what do you do? Sorry, can I didn't quite understand. Um, the simulation at a single time point by putting time there. I guess the question is, if, if you go ah. back to the mm -hmm. application, I guess, how do you, uh, you know, de de define the time points for your simulations? Yeah, uh, so let me go back to share. I oh, know my share is grayed out. 
Uh, maybe oh, you I need, can, to, need to become the presenter, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I can, I can, sorry, I can stay in the in the in the slides. I think it's yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So here on on this little screenshot. Um, um, so this this again, this is just an example. So what I've done here, I have just asked for the receptor occupancy at day 50. Uh, by putting the 50 there, I have just asked for receptor occupancy at day 50. Now again, this is just uh, an example. You might, again, you you might think of any scenario that is relevant for you that um, you want to have, like for example, you would have multiple dosing um, you at some point you reach a steady state, you have some stable trough level, and maybe you would then here pick a time point where you have this trough level and then the stable trough level, and then ask for your receptor occupancy there. This just picks out at a single time point uh, the receptor occupancy, and yeah, depending on what, what you want to ask, you, you would have to, of course, adjust this. Mm. All right, um, just a final question maybe um, before we uh, wrap up. Um, are the PK and the RO always simultaneously fit in TMDD modeling? Um, they are not. I mean, right now in this example, we just did the regression on, on, on the, like on the PK, I guess, uh, uh, it's meant the drug. So in this example, we just did a, a fitting, or, or uh, we just fitted the drug concentration itself. And I, I would say, uh, have a look at the, the PML lesson six, and there, it was really nicely shown how you, if you have data on on um, on on everything. I mean, if you have data on 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 your on your complex, and you have data on your drug PK data, you can do the regression on both of them simultaneously, but that's nicely shown in the lesson six with the, you can have several observed statements and then you can fit them simultaneously, uh, which we haven't done here for this. We have done simulations and, and just simulated uh, the concentration and the receptor occupancy. That was no regression, right? Okay, yeah. Thanks, Frank. I guess we, in, in, uh, we are running out of time here, so uh, maybe we'll come to the end. Um, if you can move up the slide, there's one final slide for what is coming up. Um, for all the rest of the questions, um, as I said in the beginning, I mean, we will post the answers to those um, uh, together with the model file and the slide deck on our user forum as usual, and uh, I'll send out a message for that. Um, oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so let me see. Where do we so uh, what's coming up next? Um, you know, for this year, 2017, uh, I will close the session on in two weeks' time on December 14th. And uh, it was really a nice uh, 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 thing to, to have uh, Frank uh, modeling some of the tips and tricks around simulation in, in Phoenix. Uh, but uh, there are some uh, situations where Phoenix simulations don't give you uh, uh, the, the right answer or cannot give you an answer. So whenever you deal with uh, probabilities, you want to have certain uh, confirmation on uh, this, uh, you, you would need to use a different tool. So what I'm going to do in our next session is to present you with a very simple preclinical example, how to simulate a desired outcome using the trial simulation uh, en engine. Uh, that is a, a new tool. Uh, that uh, I, will, I will show, and I hope this is of uh, uh, high interest in, because it's really covering uh, the simulation aspect of, of the uh, MNS. And um, uh, if you are interested, just just re register for that. I will send out a reminder for that uh, later. And uh, also for 2018, we are planning a, a series of sessions where we uh, translate non popular non-MEM models into PML. So how to use it in the Phoenix NLME software. This gives you uh, not only the translation, but both model runs, so non-MEM run, as well as the Phoenix uh, model run in one project file. So you can, comp you can compare it side by side. And uh, it, this should be an interesting topic for, for many of you. With that, I guess I'm at the end. Thanks, thank you, Frank, for giving this such a nice lecture. And thank, thank you, the audience, uh, for 
you know, continued interest. Uh, I hope uh, we'll see you again uh, in, on December 14th. Thank you, and uh, you may disconnect now.